We're going to go ahead and take a look at number 33 in section 3.7, which deals with inverse functions. So number 33, we are given the following function, f of x is equal to 1 over x plus 3. And the directions for this are saying that each equation defines a 1 to 1 function, f. Determine f inverse and verify that f of f inverse and f inverse of f are both the identity function. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create the inverse. And our process goes that we're going to change the notation. We're going to take it out of the function notation. So instead of f of x, we're going to use y. And then in order to start creating inverses, I'm going to go ahead and switch the position of the x and the y. So everywhere that I saw a y, it is now an x. And everywhere that I see an x, it's now a y. So the goal here is that we want to start creating our new function and how we usually write this inverse function is that we isolate y. So to start that, we're going to go ahead and clear out this denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by a y plus 3 because then that y plus 3 will clear out of the denominator. So I'm going to re rewrite this line. So this is the quantity of y plus 3 times x is equal to 1. And then from here, I'm probably going to have to distribute the x to each term in that quantity. So let's see what happens if um, we do that. So we have y times x plus 3x is equal to 1. And now again, recall that the goal is to get y by itself. So the easiest thing that I can start doing is subtracting 3x from both sides. So now I'm left with y times x is equal to 1 minus 3x. And then I can easily undo this multiplication that's happening on the left-hand side, this y times x, by dividing both sides by x. So I've reached my goal of isolating y, and this, if we did everything correctly, and we're assuming that we didn't make any sort of calculation errors, um, we can write this in the inverse function notation. So instead of y, we'll write f inverse of x. And recall that 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 this negative one is not telling you that it's a negative that it's an exponent of negative one. It's just a notation to indicate that this particular function that we came up with is the inverse of the original function that we were given. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and make sure that this is in fact the case. So again the directions tell you that you want to do f of f inverse and then also do f inverse of f. Okay so notice I did write this in two separate notations but what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to um, use a couple different colors. So the notation that I wrote here is how your text presented it. We can rewrite that to be f of f inverse of x. And the same thing over here, this is going to be f inverse of f of x. And it might actually help if we use different colors here. So on the interior, I'm going to use some orange. Okay, so how this is going to be written. This is saying that in my original function, everywhere that I had an x, I'm going to replace it with this entire f inverse. So everywhere that I had an x in here, this is going to become a 1 minus 3x all over x. And we're going to go ahead and we'll just do the work for that one first and then we'll come back to the second one. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we have 1 over 1 minus 3x over x plus, and then I'm going to give this 3 a common denominator of x. Right now it has a denominator of 1, so this will be 3x over x. Again, I can continue to consolidate that and clean that up. So this is going to be 1 minus 3x plus 3x all over x, since they have that common denominator. You notice the negative 3x and the 3x will cancel each other out. 
and then this leaves me with 1 over 1 over x. So you can rewrite this. This is a complex fraction, so this is really a 1 divided by 1 over x. And then we can skip the first term, flip the second term over, and make this multiplication. And then this ends up being x. So this is our identity function. We got y is equal to x. So this checks out. So far we're on the right track, um, but just because you get the identity function on the first try does not necessarily mean that you will get the identity function on the second try. So it is important that if you are seeing this going on the right track that you continue. So let's try this again. So this time we're going to start with our base as um, our inverse function will be our base. So we're going to have a 1 minus 3. And everywhere that I had an x in here, I'm going to replace it with my original f of x. So instead of a 1 minus 3x, I will have a 1 minus 3 times uh, 1 over x plus 3. And that's going to be all over a 1 minus x plus 3. Because again, that 1 over x plus 3 is replacing your x value. Okay, so we have a little bit of work to do here. So if we look at this one, we have 1 minus, if we do the multiplication, that becomes 3 over x plus 3, all over 1 over x plus 3. I'm going to write this so that I have a common denominator with my 1, so this is going to be an x plus 3 over an x plus 3 minus a 3 over x plus 3 all over 1 over x plus 3. It's quite a mouthful. I have a common denominator now that's happening up in that numerator of my complex fraction. So this is going to be x plus 3 minus 3 all over x plus 3, all of which is over 1 over x plus 3. Okay. Again, notice that those x's will cancel each other out. So now I'm left with the expression of x over x plus 3. That is all over 1 over x plus 3. I'm going to carry my work up here. And I'm going to rewrite this complex fraction as a division problem. So this is going to give me x over x plus 3 divided by 1 over x plus 3. And again, we can skip the first expression, flip the second expression over, and give ourselves a multiplication problem. Hooray. The numerator and denominator both have an x plus 3 in it, so I can go ahead and cancel those out. And I'm finally left with an x over 1, or simply x. So we did prove that since I got the identity function both times, we did prove that the function that we created was the inverse of 1 over x plus 3. And that is question number 33.